morning. It's a bit chilly. I'm experimenting. It's a bit chilly today. Like, where did I put this? No, hold on. So today is uh, Wednesday, I think. And time is 8.15. And I'm not at work. I'll tell you why in a second, but the the main topic of today's video is we're going to talk about something related to trucking. Oh, I got it. Now look at this beautiful landscape inside my car. Well, nothing works on this view because I, I did the uh, I did a remote a remote start listening to Holy Channel Channel 79 on uh, on uh, XM you know they have this dedicated channels right uh, for Christmas music on holidays of course I have satellite radio still free until next five months and they already keep calling me you know you want to extend? I said, yeah, I still have like six months, I think, because I got the car in July. But anyway, so this week we worked uh, uh, just like last week, 7.30 to 5. And then Friday, it's supposed to be 7.30 to 4. But it's been over, like, I worked two past weekends. I didn't have a single day off in the past weekend, but the past uh, two weeks but the good news is that i made a lot of money there's a lot of overtime the loa is through the roof so because of that i went to a nice hotel where finally there's an elevator like the guy says oh the elevator is down the hall i said wait you have an elevator <laughs> which means there's more than two floors because all the cheap you know this flea bag motels i was staying at they're just two stories there's no elevator and you just enter your door is outside you know like it's not inside the building like these guys have some rooms like that too where you just open your own door on the outside but most of the like my room is on the top floor away from noise very nice room you know with the kitchen even though i don't cook but it's big you know it's like sweet right so that's how i was able to afford it because i because of these weekends i made a lot of money but then yesterday I was moving some uh, crates with my forks. My phone rings and it's the supervisor, the, the big supervisor of the entire uh, site. And he says, Sergey, I got an offer for you. How would you like to work night shifts for the next three days? So that was Tuesday, right? So he, he offered me to work sh uh, night shifts, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I said, can I go home for the weekend? he says yes and i thought about it and i said i'll be honest with you i said i'm not exactly 30 years old i think i'll, f I'll fall asleep you know <laughs> and he says uh well, it's okay it's okay he says it's i'm asking it's voluntary so we'll just go to the next person and he said i'm sorry i'm sorry but yeah i don't think i can do it yeah oh and he wanted 7 p.m to 7 a.m and then another supervisor called me the like the guy i usually work with like my direct supervisor i would call him and he says uh, where are you i i i have an offer for you proposition i said i'm at this part of the site okay i'll come to meet you and he came to meet me and he says uh, and before he said anything i said i already talked to the big boss and he says, oh, he called you. I said, yeah, but I said, I'm not sure I can stay awake, you know. Like, I remember in the army, when I was in the army, and sometimes we had these night uh, duties, you know, like as a sentry somewhere at the guard house. I remember like 3 or 4 a.m., it's, it's, you know, game over. You just, you cannot do anything, you know. You can do push-ups, sit-ups, I mean, squats. You just, as soon as you sit still for one second, you just, you know, and then of course some idiot sergeant shows up at 3.59 when I'm like lying on the bench because I cannot take it. Uh, private, 
sleeping in the post. And I'm like, oh yes, sir. Okay. I'm awake. I just closed my eyes for a second. <laughs> and and this guy says, uh, well, we he says first we offer this to our best people, and then if you when you say no, we go down the down the chain. And I'm like, holy moly. I'm the best person. So and oh, and I said, what will I be doing for 12 hours? And I said, and they said, same stuff. We need um, we need a fuel person. So you know, I know how to do it. I've been doing it for the past month, I think. And so I told this guy, I said, okay, tell the big boss, uh, I'll do it. Just you know, as a as a try, you know. So 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. and then I'm guessing you sleep in the morning and that's why I'm not at work right now it's 8 22 a.m. Uh, which it actually feels nice you know like there's no rush so now I'm going to work at 7 7 p.m. I guess I have to be there at like 6 45 or anything okay in financial news so that's what I'll be doing for the next 72 hours it's gonna be crazy but oh and they said uh, the pay is slightly higher like buck and a half an hour for all hours which is like extra i don't know 15 bucks a, a night but which is nice kind of like a night premium you know but we'll see i hope i stay awake we'll probably have to go to walmart and buy a big thermos for coffee and get some fresh you know veggies and fruits so i can snack on them and i know there should be two breaks like of course there's a 30 minute break like lunch you know and then there should be two 15 minute breaks i'm gonna ask them to combine 15 minutes into 30 so that maybe i can take a nap you know like take 30 minutes for for a meal and then take another 30 minutes just close my eyes and i'll set my phone for I don't know 25 minutes and just take a quick nap I know that even even 15 20 minutes will help you know I know from experience because I when I used to work on the railroad quite often I would man the entire passenger car by myself and of course the train you know travels through the night and you know you have to open the door at each station and you just learn you know to sleep like this with one eye open and then when you feel the train goes through the switches and it starts shaking like this you know when it comes into a station i'm up and awake i go stand by the door quickly open any passengers no boom go back to sleep <laughs> but back then i was i don't know 25 years old so now i'm 61 so we'll see so in financial news my bank where i'm holding my mortgage uh, reported uh, poor income this year they just did a statement I was just watching the news when I was having breakfast another nice thing about my hotel that they have breakfast and coffee starting at 6 a.m. because these other hotels it's like starts at uh, 8 or something so I never could get anything because you know I leave at like 6 30 right but this place, you know, nice continental breakfast, you know, like egg sausage, you know, coffee, some potato cubes, you know, cool. Or you can make your own pancakes, you know, but I just had some eggs and sausage. And after this, I'm going to go to McDonald's because they do have a one Starbucks, but it's inside a big grocery store and there's no sitting area. So any, anyway, so the bank reported low income and when they when they ask them what's the reason they said bad loans bad loans so I guess my huge down payment I gave up for my apartment did not help so many people are having issues because you know rates are going up right uh, people go out of business they lose their jobs like the economy is not exactly great but I went crazy and I said I want flexible rate call me nuts but I like flexible rate it's kind of like you know true true capitalism because when the rates are down you're getting all that you know but now they're slightly up but still you know my apartment it's way cheaper than renting like a similar apartment 
and also it went up in price I think uh, by 50 60 grand already Canadian in in one year because Calgary is so popular as people from all over Canada move here companies move here because of cheaper taxes uh, cheaper real estate prices you know lots of qualified workers because you know less construction oil sand everywhere right and another piece of financial news is that that I heard while having breakfast is that crazy crazy thing you know the, in Canada we have a two dollar coin Canadians call it toonie toonie t-o-o-n-i-e toonie it's a two dollar coin in the states you guys don't have it but here we have two dollar coin and recently they've been an influx of fake two dollar coins so somebody creates uh you know somebody spends time to make a fake two dollar coin how much does that cost three dollars so i think these criminals are not very smart you know like they, they should make twenty dollar bills or ten dollar bills but not two dollar metal coins nuts okay and finally to the main topic of the video so somebody sent me a message no name no nothing hey sergey you have a second uh, I was wondering if you can give me advice on uh, being a uh, leased owner operator versus having independent authority. Oh, the way he put it, he says, if you were doing it again, would you would you go with a company like some chick keeps texting me under different names you know like same picture and somewhere in new york city and she says, hey sarah like look at the, what is it i missed traveling with you monica remember london let's travel again and there's a picture beautiful chinese lady and some nice british building in the in the back and then the next text i didn't say anything i was just thinking shall i do a joke and then the next text is, uh, what happened to you? Why haven't you replied yet? And I said, uh, I think I was having some wine. So I, I had my wicked sense of humor. So I said, I wrote, I died. I can still text back until December 1st. Then I enter the white light. <laughs> oh, it's because I know. I know why I wrote that because I was watching, uh, you know, this TV series, uh, Ghost uh, Whisperer that's when she talks this jennifer love hewitt talks to dead people and then after they enter the white light and so this one i said i died i can still text back until december 1st then i enter the white light <laughs> she, she didn't write anything back but anyway sorry uh and so this guy says um Oh yeah, he wrote, um, I was wondering if you would start everything over, if you would, st if you would start everything over, would you still get your own authority or would you consider leasing on to a bigger carrier like a Landstar so you can get your hands on, on government loads? And then I, I said, well, for Canadians, Landstar was not very good back when I was there in 2010. 2010 to 2014 and but he says no i'm in us uh even though landstar takes a big percentage of, of your loads i've talked to a couple of successful drivers from landstar who made good money on step deck kind of stoggers pulling explosives and military but they don't they don't tell how hard it is to get to that point maybe you can just make a short video of, um so yeah, so uh, I can only say from the perspective of a Canadian driver, but at least I did work as a lease operator. Uh, I started as a company driver right back in 2005, then I was a lease operator or whatever, like owner operator with a company. Um, first one, then another, and then Landstar. And after Landstar, I went to another company, still as owner operator. And then I got my own authority. So. 
the biggest problem with being a owner operator with a bigger company is uh, never join a company when where they have company drivers because the the company will always give the best loads to company drivers because the company trucks they make more money right and I remember the the first company I had my own truck bought my own truck and then I bought my own trailer I had a step deck and all they would give me with some crazy you know bricks lumber basically they were giving me cheap flatbed loads not taking advantage of my uh, nice little step deck even though it was a 48 but it was super low you know low profile and i got that because i knew they had a customer who was making generators and those loads paid a lot of money and then i even installed the kind of stoga just like this guy says kind of stoga but back then kind of stogas you know rolling top on step decks they were not very popular now everybody uses them but it did not work very well because there's two levels you know very difficult to work with and so i specifically got that that was like twenty thousand bucks you know canadian because i thought you know they would start giving me these generator jobs and i think i got like one in a month and then i talked to the dispatcher and i said what happened you guys lost that contract or something and this guy i think he was a bit crazy he says well, you think we do only one or two loads a month with these guys? Last month we did 150 loads. And I'm like, I was offended. I said, I just got a you know brand new trailer for you and the topping system. And basically that's what happened. So they were giving all these generator loads, nice you know loads to company drivers and they were paying them, I don't know, 35, 40 cents a kilometer or a mile, right? So because they didn't want to pay me percentage even though the percentage they advertise that's how they get you right they say hey you know 80 percent 85 percent and you think oh man i'm gonna be rich right but then they don't give you loads they give you cheap loads and so that's uh adva big advantage of landstar versus other companies because they don't have company drivers so again never ever ever join a company as an owner operator where they have company drivers so that's the best advice i could give you but between the two so landstar the, there's no job security they're very strict again i'm talking about my experience in 2010 2014 but they're super strict you know when the, you go through orientation they're telling you that and they're being honest they're saying that we're gonna fire you you're gonna we'll tell you to go home if you do this and that's how I lost it because I stopped on the side of the road. I was actually doing a video and I stopped to remove a camera from the top of my load because I wanted to show the how you know I go forward and the camera was facing backwards because I wanted to show how the trailer turns, you know. And I, I forgot to cut that part out and somebody forwarded that message, that video to, uh, to the management and I got fired. So there's no job security with Landstar you do something a small mistake like it was uh, no traffic outside of town I think it was like Saturday you know I stopped uh, before entering the freeway it was even inside the city uh, as, as, as I remember it was Minot North Dakota I just left the truck stop and right before when it becomes a freeway you know divided highway I stopped on the shoulder like it wasn't in the way there was nobody around and but they don't care so no job security secondly the expression people use when talking about Lancaster they say they will nickel and dime you to death basically they charge you for everything like it's a couple of bucks but it's like offensive you know like they charge you for using the the load board they charge you for sending in your your information I think it's like they treat you as kind of like as an enemy you know you're not part of the family you're like a totally outside contractor so they charge you for everything like satellite fees you know all this bs it's not much but again it's just the principle of the matter is that you know you pay for everything and and then again from my perspective they didn't have enough loads for canadians right because i cannot they don't allow it they didn't allow us to do loads inside us so um, I could only look for loads either inside Canada or between Canada and US. And of course, 
I was able to look at the entire load board and of course that's the system right with with Landstar you kind of like your own dispatcher uh, they give you access to a load board and I think they even charge you for that they charge you for access to their load board um, and we just look at the loads and you, then you email or call that agent because they're not brokers they're dedicated Landstar agents well they can have their own broker business but on the system they call them agents and first off they never had enough loads for us Canadians uh, but there were like if I switch the load board you know the search criteria to the entire US like US to US I would see like I don't know 4,000 loads but when I switch to my criteria US to Canada Canada to US inside Canada I would see 50 loads you know, like seriously and uh, and half of them like I would sit for you know two weeks three weeks looking for a load and another problem so if you're in US right so you don't have this problem so there's more loads but what I found is that many shippers don't want to work with Landstar because lots of agents are idiots you know because it's all like you know the agent him or herself is the, like the the guy who owns the office and then he has just people like dispatchers or salespeople right those people they often ha hire them with no experience they pay them you know a couple of bucks a, an hour and like i remember talking to one guy and he says um like i was trying to negotiate a better price right because you can do that with them but this guy says oh i'm only getting 50 bucks for this you know and i was shocked but that's the thing because they are not he's not the actual uh transportation broker he just works for a guy right and so they're like an office worker and so quite often they don't have their own loads they just steal them from not steal them but they go to another load board uh let's say when i started doing this as a freight broker right i would post a load and the landster guy would call me and say hey sergey can we uh work with this I said, wait, you're a broker. How how are we going to work together? But that's what they do. They go to another load board. They don't have their own loads. And then they reach an agreement with the original broker. So there's always like double brokering, triple brokering. And that's why I remember uh, quite a few shippers, they would say, you know, or when somebody would post a load in the comments, they would say, no Lanster. <laughs> you know. Yeah, this was like a freight broker, you know, because the freight broker knew that sooner sooner or later somebody from Lanster would call him and try to uh, deal with this. And because of, there's so many people in, in in this chain, quite often they would give you wrong information, they would give you, you know, wrong dimensions, uh, you know, the, even a wrong description of the load. They still remember, no BS, I'm being 100% honest, they sent me to pick up metal metal somewhere in i forgot like south dakota no, wisconsin and i i go there and it's like open field and all i see is this uh, huge wheel loaders uh loading you know those super bags you know big super bags with some kind of material like dirt you know and i go to the shipper and i say hey i'm from landstar here's my uh, bill of lading i'm supposed to pick up some metal parts here the guy almost fell off the chair laughing he says what metal parts you know we only have this these big super bags with material inside you know you know kind of like stuff you buy for your garden i forgot what it's called but anyway i called the agent and he says oh really it's not metal i said no oh okay just you okay to load it i say yes sir all right that was like probably the most extreme case where the guy totally was no clue what he sent the driver to pick up you know and i remember i had uh either had a step deck or i had a flatbed but they gave me a bunch of these you know super heavy uh, bags so you put them like one next to each other and i had probably eight rows and i think they're like three four thousand pounds each you know they're pretty heavy and uh, so yeah that's the problem like lack of professionalism uh lots of fees um no job security 
no loads for Canadians uh, negative attitude towards Landstar from many shippers and brokers because they make mistakes and you know so I don't know but the best part about Landstar and what got me on this path to being independent hold on my, my back is on fire because I switched my heated seat I love this feature you know what's cool is that I have this I have the remote start right so I start the car remotely and I can make the seat heat and the steering wheel to turn on automatically so when you come in the car is already warm you know in winter in Alberta this is perfect uh, but yeah so the best feature of Landstar was the load board you know never before when I was a leased owner operator I had access to something like that because why because you know I was searching let's say you know let's say I had a step deck right so I'm searching for step deck loads then if there's no step deck loads okay I'll change to V you know van dry van because sometimes you know they had loads that paid good money right and you know you would ask them hey can can you load it on a step deck and of course quite often they would say no it's for a driver or a reefer but then out of curiosity i changed the the search because that load board is super flexible i changed the search to you know basically uh, i all trailers and i sorted all the loads by price because quite often on the landster load board unlike regular load board they would put a price you know how much the load pays and I'm like holy moly you know like I see loads that you know five six seven ten dollars a mile US you know and I'm like what is this and so that's how I got interested in this heavy haul you know because that's what I was seeing you know these were like you know RGN trailers RGN or you know stretch double drop you know stuff like that so I started that was my like daily routine I would look at all the trailers like what kind of trailer paid you know maximum money because you know my I always try to get to the top in every profession I I, I enter try to you know make more money learn you know learn about uh, the job how to get better and so that's how I got interested so without Landstar I would never get my own authority and I even then then I still went I still was hesitating because you talk to people some people say oh that's bs you know own authority i know lots of people they will tell you i know lots of people that actually you know had authority and then they you know canceled it and they went to work for somebody else because yeah it's not for everybody it's you have to be self-motivated right you have to be like you know not everybody can be self-employed right so you have to be able to you know get up and go right so if you cannot own a business then own authority is not for you because you're you wear many hats right so like i was the driver i was a fleet manager you know service manager dispatcher you know uh working with maps computers ordering permits i did everything but for me that was interesting like i i get bored very easy if i just do one function so actually for me it was it was cool um and so yeah so uh some people will tell you that it's not it's bs and so i still hesitated even after landstyle i knew what trailer was i wanted i knew i wanted to be in heavy haul and i wanted to be on my own on my own on my own but i still went to work for this uh moronic trucking company in orangeville orangeville ontario and again despite what i just said i i did not follow my own advice because i didn't have a choice nobody would hire me but these guys had uh, no because i remember but you know it was my my record was good everything was good but it, it was it was hard to find a, a job you know this was uh, 2014 and so i found these guys that promised like 82 percent i still remember 82 83 i had my own truck my own trailer I just bought my first uh, Kaufman RGN 
and I had uh, what did I have? Uh, did I have a Mac? No, I still had my yellow international. And so these guys are yeah, 82 percent, and they had company drivers. So again, all the good loads were going to company drivers. But I did move. I did start doing you know heavy haul, moving machinery, uh, moving uh, you know equipment. So I learned. I learned a lot uh, with these guys, but money was not there, right? And eventually, the um, when they learned that I applied for authority, they basically kicked me out. You know, not didn't fire me, but they said, "Hey, you know, we about we have to renew your license because you know it was their license on my truck, and if you're gonna cancel in one month, like when do you think you're gonna be uh, uh, leaving?" I said, well, I'm waiting for my, you know, paperwork to come through. And basically, they made it so that it was not profitable for them to extend my license. Like some, I don't know, what was it, like two, three thousand bucks? I'm guessing uh, that's what I was paying, you know. Because they found a guy that could take my place. And uh, something about that, about because the, the time was when they had to renew the, the license for the truck, you know. And so they just asked me to leave, you know, like, and so I had no choice. It was a very difficult start. I didn't have any savings. And so I got my, I got my authority. And I still remember first load, I barely had any money for fuel. And I'm sitting after delivery, I'm sitting at a truck stop and there was so many fees. Of course, I went cheap. I didn't pay attention to the lots of toll roads. I think it was somewhere like delivering in the Northeast. And I'm sitting at a truck stop, no money, but I already had a account set up with, uh, with uh, you know, what is this? Uh, financial company, right? That would pay me 95% immediately of the bill, right? So I send them all the paperwork, signed bill of lading, and they pay me 95%. And that was my first money, and I was so excited. But until then, I was totally broke, I'm telling you. I barely made that first trip. Because again, because these guys, there was hardly any money with this um, when I was leased owner operator because they were giving all the best loads to company drivers. And so I didn't make good money and then they just kicked me out because they didn't want to extend my license, right? For, for, and lose this two or three grand, I don't know. What was that all about? So anyway, so that's the, that's the truth about Landstar, about your own authority, but uh, Landsta is a great stepping stone. I think it's a great learning tool. You know, you learn to talk to agents, you learn to negotiate rates, and of course you get the loads, right? If if you're in a good area and you have proper equipment. But for me, being my own boss was really, you know, its own reward. I didn't care about money. I just wanted to be the guy who signs the, you know, bill of lading as the carrier. It felt good, you know. Um, I don't know. And then as a carrier, uh, people, you can move loads for anybody, right? Like with Landstar, you only can move loads for, for these agents, right? If somebody, let's say, comes over and says, Hey, Sergey, I watched the videos. Can you move this farm tractor for me? And you're not allowed to do that because when I was a Landstar driver, right? I don't have my own authority. So I would have to call an agent I know and tell them to to book this guy right and of course you know then I would get my own what was it back then it was 73 uh, percent I think it was 64 percent if you only have your own truck and 72 percent if you have a regular trailer truck and trailer and if you have a, like a three axle trailer like a specialized you know three axle step deck or RGN you you, you they paid you 73 percent so you lose 17 percent so whereas now when i was a carrier some guy calls me hey sergey i watched your video somebody told me you can do this i bought a dozer at richie brothers in bolton can you move it to michigan so sure you know we agreed on a rate i ordered permits i created my bill of leading went to richie brothers loaded the dozer brought it back to the brought it to michigan to the super happy farmer you know you can do whatever you want that's the thing when you're a carrier but of course this guy was asking about military loads uh 
it's super difficult to get these kind of contracts when you are independent right because this takes a lot of time uh, lots of connections but sometimes you know you start working with people and they would pass you like you know when you're a carrier uh, you start working with you know brokers of course right uh, maybe occasional direct shipper and then they would you know if they like how you work they would you know forward your info to somebody and eventually you can I know there was a case like that in Canada like one carrier was working and uh, this lady she worked for an army and she would post these loads on the Canadian load board and so these guys were working with her and she, they were super happy um, but yeah it takes time it takes time so if Landstar already has this contract and you want to do it uh, then probably that might be a good idea but again just remember what I said about Landstar about these dimes and nickels and no job security and basically agents are not very trustworthy you know so I don't know it's it's um uh, it's up to everybody else but i would still go on my own if if this was uh if i was doing this again except i would not uh i would keep my expenses to a minimum uh you know maybe stay like when i had the kenworth truck it was an awesome truck you know that's it you don't need anything else but i now what i would not have done is i would not have uh got that crazy you know booster and the jeep i would just stay with the four axle uh, because i had a 55 ton right drop side rail perfect trailer three axle and then i bought a flip axle so i had four axles which is perfect for where i lived ontario right and northeast us like here in alberta you do need if you want to do loads like that like eight axles you do need uh, a jeep and a booster right because they don't allow four axle trucks here unless it's a uh, uh, tri drive which is super heavy and expensive uh, but anyway on the last note i keep reading on the news that you know brokers go out of business i talked to this guy who works as a freight broker he says freight is down so now might not be a very good time to get into trucking i will just do more research uh, honestly I'm super happy with this construction job I have now even though the hours are long but you know you're getting experience uh, it's a very interesting job with machinery I just wish they would allow me filming because I could create very good interesting content you know but I'm super happy just like my personal plan is somehow to get into a wheel loader or a rock truck later on because those are uh, they should pay better you know especially like some people say I was talking to one guy at the, at the side he was working uh, up north somewhere in like yellow what is it uh, you know Northwest Territories there and they they it's called fly in fly out you know they pay for the plane from Calgary Edmonton they pay for 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 your travel and then you live there at a the camp for let's say two weeks and then you go back for two weeks you know like that would be ideal like i never been up north that far but maybe not now not in winter maybe when the weather is better uh, i would love to do that uh, because then you have two weeks or one week off whatever and you travel you know you see the world you know <laughs> so i don't know i don't know now i, I don't think tracking now is uh, honestly is a, is a good career uh, I'm not doing even I, I still have my freight broker license everything is you know uh, ready so if somebody has a load or they ask me for a quote I can do it I'm still paying for my access to the load board but I'm not doing any freight because now I'm more focused on construction and learning improving my skid steer operator skills and trying to get into bigger and better machines so hope this helps thanks for watching bye
chilly. 